iOS 26.1 is officially here for everyone to download. It's packed with subtle but really interesting changes from new Apple Music UI tweaks to more control over liquid glass, some customization updates as well as settings, and there's a lot to cover so let's get right into it. Hey everyone, it's Andrew and welcome back to the channel and we'll start with Apple Music. If I go into Apple Music right here and I have a song already queued up to play and I press play, I now have the option right here if I swipe to change to the next song which is pretty cool. And if I slide down, I can go right here and slide to the next song as well. And continuing with Apple Music, if I go to the lock screen, I now have a new animation, but if I tap on this right here, the animation is now a little bit different. So if I tap on it again, just to see it, that is what it looks like in iOS 26.1 now. Now there are some new changes to the lock screen as well. For example, if I get out of Apple Music really quick, if I long press here, I have this cool wallpaper, and I wanna show you when I hit extend wallpaper and go back to here, it now has a wallpaper extended text, just showing you that the wallpaper has been extended. I'll go ahead and make an adjustment there, bring the clock down a little bit. And I do wanna call out the liquid glass elements have come to the font and color. So if I tap here, you can now see that the font and color section of customizing your phone has liquid glass elements. Whenever you have an alarm set and you're strictly on your lock screen, you'll now have to slide to unlock your phone. And so we'll wait for the alarm to go off. So now when the alarm goes off, you have the snooze and slide to stop option. You literally have to go to it and slide to shut off your alarm. It might be annoying in the beginning, but after beta testing for weeks now, I've gotten used to it. For years on the lock screen, there's been this annoying feature that was not able to be customized. If you slide to the left, it opens up the camera. Sometimes you do that mistakenly and not on purpose. Well, in iOS 26.1, you can now shut that off. In settings, if you scroll down to camera and then go all the way to the bottom, there's an option of lock screen swipe to open camera. And all you have to do now is shut that feature off. And now if I go back to my lock screen and slide to the left, I no longer have that option, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. And if you ever were wondering if under display and brightness, Apple was going to update the wallpapers, they now have done it. If you look here now, the iOS 26 wallpaper shows under the light and dark mode, options under the appearance. The Photos app gets a few subtle but useful refinements that make editing and navigating your Photos app a little bit more smoother. So if I go into Photos, the first thing that you'll notice is when you take a screenshot in iOS 26 right here on the right, the navigation and just touching things, it was a little bit hard to see and just a little bit difficult to make out what you needed to, but this is what a screenshot looks like in iOS 26.1. You can see up at the top, it's easier to get and see visibly the different things on the screen as well as at the bottom. So I think this is a pretty nice change. Whenever you're playing a video and you wanna pause it or scrub to the next section that you wanna look at, there is a new video scrubber within the Photos app. And I think it looks pretty nice, it's pretty easy to adjust and that is what it looks like. And if I'm looking at a big section here and I want to go to, let's say this right here, and if I long press, I now up at the top have the option of share, favorite, and delete. And so this is what it previously looked like in iOS 26. And this option, which to me makes a lot of sense, share and favorite are going to be the ones that I use the most. And so those are the quickest ones to get to right up at the top. They're at the top in iOS 26, but I think in iOS 26.1, it looks like it's in a lot better of a place. One of the biggest visual changes in iOS 26.1 is liquid glass, and Apple's added more control and consistency across the platform. If you go into the phone app and go to the keypad, you'll notice that the numbers now have the liquid glass elements. And if I long press on the home screen, the button to remove an app now has a frosted element instead of liquid glass. So I guess it's just a little bit easier to see as opposed to this is what it looked like in iOS 26. You can see it's not as transparent. You'll also notice that the dock in iOS 26.1 is slightly a little bit more transparent. It's kind of hard to see, but if you look at the bottom right, 
you can see that more red is coming through and it's on the same wallpaper. So you can slightly see there's a little bit of a difference and especially right here in the corner. And now you can control liquid glass to a certain extent. It's not by much, but it is the first step in being able to customize liquid glass. So if you go into settings and you scroll down to display and brightness again, and if you look here, there's an option of liquid glass that's brand new. And it has the option of switching between clear and tinted. So if I click on tinted, it'll actually show you right here the difference. So this is what tinted looks like. It just becomes frosted glass instead of liquid. And clear has that nice transparent look. If I switch to tinted, this is what it looks like, for example, in Apple Music. It's just less see-through and less transparent. But if I go back to clear, for example, and come back, you can see it's much more transparent. Take your pick on which one you like, but I still think clear is what I prefer. If I go into a folder, let's say I click on here, the font and where it's located has changed. And so if I look at iOS 26, this is what it looked like. Let's just say for utilities, it's a little bit higher and in the middle, whereas this is more left and closer to the folder. So that's the visual change for folders. And it's a little bit difficult to see, but Apple Notes now has liquid glass elements under writing tools. If I scroll down, you can see it's a little bit more transparent and has that liquid glass element to it. There's also several under the hood tweaks and settings that give you more customization and control. And for a visual change in settings, like if I go to Wi-Fi, the large description sections are now left aligned. This is what it looked like before in iOS 26. And that visual change is throughout all of iOS 26.1. Also in settings under sounds and haptics, the silent mode option is now red instead of green. Under general, there is a new option of local capture. So if I go to general and I scroll down a little bit, there's the option right here of local capture. So in this, you can add a local capture to control center to record your own audio and video during a call to save and edit later. And so here you can save a location right now it's set to downloads but you can change it to a specific folder if needed and here if you only want to get the audio instead of just video and audio you just want audio only you can turn this on and it will save the audio to that location also in settings under accessibility and then if you go into touch and if I scroll down all the way to the bottom there's an option to turn on prefer single touch actions and so this will tweak the interface to allow that option and you have to turn it on. It's off by default. Again, in settings under phone. So I have to search for phone really quick and go there. There's an option now to turn on haptics. So if you scroll down a little bit, there's an option to play haptics when a call is connected or dropped. I actually haven't been able to test this out yet, but it seems like it's pretty cool and you can turn it on there. And under accessibility, if you go to display and text size, there's an option to show borders. So this is off by default, but if you turn it on, it will just give borders to everywhere that there's liquid glass. And so when I turn that on, let's say I go into here, for example, we're looking at the folder, you see that there is a slight border. Again, there's a border now around the dock and around my calendar. If I go into Apple Music, there's borders around there. As well as if I go into Safari, you can see that there's borders really throughout all of iOS. And I actually think it looks pretty cool. Again, it's an accessibility feature, but you can turn it on if you want. And under settings, we also have under privacy and security, if I go here, and then if I go all the way to the bottom, there's a new section of background security improvements. And so what this will do, if there is a security improvement that needs to be installed, this will allow you to automatically install it. Now, I don't really like this language that Apple puts out, but if I try to turn this off, it says that turning off this background security improvement, the security of your iPhone and personal data will be reduced if you turn off security improvements. So I don't really like that. It's just turning off automatically installing it. You can install it whenever you like manually. Anyways, that's a new setting and section as well. You probably noticed this right away, but the Apple TV app has been updated for a new logo. To me, it has an Apple intelligence hue to it. And so speaking of Apple intelligence, there are new languages that is supported for or Apple intelligence. So you now have Chinese traditional, Danish, Dutch, Swedish, 
Norwegian, Portuguese from Portugal, Vietnamese, and Turkish. If you have AirPods that supports live translation, there's new languages as well. So you get Italian, Japanese, Korean, Chinese Mandarin simplified, and Chinese Mandarin traditional. So new languages to that as well, which is pretty cool. In the fitness app, if I go to workout, if I tap here right at the top to create my own workout. So I can come here, hit select, and then it'll give me the option to select the workout that I want to do, the duration, the start time, the estimated calories that I plan on burning, and I can also add my effort to it. That's pretty cool. There's a ton of workouts within here, which I think is awesome. And you can really create your own kind of routine. Whereas I know a lot of people use Apple Fitness, but it's not really customizable. And this is a step in that direction. And that's what's new with iOS 26.1. Some of the changes are small, but together they make iOS feel a lot more refined. I think overall there's a lot more stability and liquid glass elements everywhere as well as refinement. Personally, while testing beta, I personally didn't notice any battery improvement or anything like that. I know people that have older models have really suffered. And so maybe check back in a week and let me know what your battery experience has been like. Let me know in the comments below which feature stands out to you the most. I'm guessing probably the clock. I really like the Apple Music UI tweaks. I think that's really cool. And if you like this kind of video, don't forget to subscribe for more Apple coverage, especially with iOS 26.2 beta coming soon. As always, guys, thanks for watching. God bless. And I will see you on the next video.